Okay, if there are no further questions, we'll, uh, we'll move on to uh, the second part, which um, is um, SSB uh, transceivers. Now, all right, so um, SSB, now people associate SSB transceivers with complexity, things they can't build. You know, a lot of the old timers, they might have built stuff as far un until, you know, with valves and AM, but as soon as things went to SSB, then, then they went out and bought a black box. Um, but it's, um, if anything, it's become easier and simpler to build SSB equipment. Um, and uh, there's been some ingenious circuits floating around. I don't know how many, um, I think they've been going on for, um, quite a few years. There's um, one on a Polish website and some of the Russians have been uh, doing some interesting stuff with simple phasing SSB gear. Um, now, of course, the method that um, most of the theory texts and things concentrated on was the filter method of SSB generation. The idea is that you uh, generated a uh, RF oscillator, mixer stage, audio amplifier, microphone. You have a double sideband signal that's generated here. It's two sidebands, no carrier. Um, you're mixing the incoming RF from a local oscillator, it could be a crystal oscillator, to a mixer stage, mixing it with audio, and you have a, a double sideband signal here, um, double sideband suppressed carrier. That's fine, but for SSB, then you want to put it through a filter, which chops off one half, and because that's normally crystal controlled on one frequency, you uh, then have to mix it um, with a, another, another mixer, mixing RF, you need another local oscillator, usually a VFO, and then you have to amplify that. So that's your basic filter SSB transmitter. Um, you can, if you want, just amplify from here. I actually built an SSB transmitter that operates only on 7160 um, on 40 meters. Um, and because you can buy crystals for that cheaply, you could use them for the local oscillator and the crystal filter. It's a single channel. SSB transceiver and uh, and it's a great rig but you do sometimes want the flexibility to um, vary in frequency particularly if you're a QRP station where you are often calling other people on their frequency so frequency agility is important and with a filter type SSB transceiver then you need an extra stage of uh, frequency conversion and that ex adds extra components and um, complexity um, so then of course there's the phasing method. It was um, popular in the early days of SSB before there were crystal filters. Um, it's mathematically quite complex to uh, um, explain, but the uh, basic approach is that you have a VFO local oscillator. You split its signal, um, you, or you split its signal into two. One is in uh, 90 degrees out of phase um, uh, of the other signal, you then put into basically two balanced mixers. You also have your signal from your microphone audio amplifier. You also split that in phase 90 degrees, and you feed them into each of your um, each of your balance modulators. So you've got two balance modulators. You're splitting phase at both RF and also at audio but then you have an SSB signal and which you can then amplify you've got no further RF frequency conversions um, that method um, wasn't used much at least in amateur circles for a long time however with software defined radios and uh, um, and other things the phasing method has come back into its own um, You've got sound cards that accept I and Q outputs, uh, inputs, and uh, and uh, the thing that does do that is is actually a phasing transmitter in reverse um, that um, converts your incoming signal down to a uh, um, lower frequency. Um, basically, it pretty much audio. Your sound card processes the I and Q, and uh, and with those two signals that are 90 degrees out of phase, it's, it's a bit like um, seeing with two eyes instead of one. You're able to see um, perspective and distances better than, uh, than just with the one signal. And in the case of software-defined radio um, software, uh, then you can um, um, actually pick out SSB signals rather than, uh, than uh, 
hearing the image. Um, and that requires a stereo sound card. So phasing has come back in with software-defined radios um, quite a bit. Um, people like Rick Campbell over in the US has basically built a, uh, a board where you can put any frequency, I think it's from one to 500 megahertz, into the single board and its output will be an SSB signal. So um, if, if you want something that's very broadband, then phasing is, you know, his approach to phasing has, uh, has a lot going for it. Um, in terms of uh, really simple things, phase shift networks, it, it's uh, um, probably not taught as much as it could be because you know, it's not one of the basic building blocks we're normally familiar with, but it can be as simple as um, um, a capacitor and a, and a resistor. Um, just going from memory. Now, a thing with that is you're, you're taking one signal, that might be the secondary of a VFO coil. Now, you can apply the phase shift in a receiver to either the incoming signal or the local oscillator. It doesn't really matter. Um, um, 90, so, so here, this is a secondary winding from, from say, a uh, tuned circuit. Might be at the front end, resistor and a capacitor um, across them. The junction is earthed. You need to make one of them variable, um, and you've got zero 90 degree signals come out. So that is a phase split using just two components. So um, now the limitation with that is that that will only give you an even 90 degrees phase shift at one particular frequency. Um, so there are more complex circuits that use a few more parts that give you a better response over a um, um, a bigger range, and that's particularly that's particularly important at the audio side. Um, now, the advantage of using passive components, like you, you can have phase shift networks that use active components, um, PAMPs, or you can do it software defined. But the big advantage of passive components, like resistors and capacitors, um, is that you can feed the signal one way um, or the other way. Um, so if you were to make a transceiver, then you don't actually need to swap, um, swap inputs and outputs. So you can actually save a lot of circuitry because a lot of your circuitry is used for both transmit and receive, and there's not too much in the way of fancy switching. So to explain how we are able to build a 80 meter phasing transceiver with seven transistors, um, if we first of all start with the um, We'll start, we'll start in the middle here with your local oscillator. In this case, we are not going to split the, um, actually we'll put it near the middle of the board. We're not going to split the signal from the local oscillator. Um, you can if you want, that's 3.5. Now, unlike a, um, a filter type rig, you can make that frequency agile um, because there's no worries with the crystal filter. Um, I use a 3.58 megahertz ceramic resonator and that will pull over about 100 kilohertz range on 80 meters. Although they are rare, you can buy ceramic resonators for 3.68 and that will cover another 100 kilohertz segment. So um, you can actually cover nearly a 200 kilohertz segment just by switching in uh, one or the other ceramic resonators. So once we have our <coughs> basic signal on 80 meters, um, we'll say 3.6 megahertz, um, we need to draw some two balance modulators. It's basically um, um, four diodes. Um, now, from here, we have our phase splitter thing before. Another coil here. Right, now, if we look at it from the point of view of a receiver, depending on the circuitry, we might have a uh, We'll, we'll, we'll describe the receiver part of it first as the transmitter is just in reverse. Um, two signals here. Oh, we need another phase. I can't remember how. Anyway, we, I think it was like that. And then we had capacitor there. And a transformer here. Right, um, that's basically a, a simple single signal 
SSB receiver and I stress single signal because a lot of receivers, the very simple receivers, are direct conversion and they're not bad receivers but the problem is their audio image. So if your local oscillator is on 3.6 megahertz and there's a signal on 3.595 well, then you'll hear that as a 5 kilohertz um, carrier but if there's also one on 3.605, then you'll hear that as well. And they'll both interfere with one another. Um, that's because you're hearing the two sidebands and you haven't got a filter to null out the opposite one. So a direct conversion receiver of that manner is not really suitable for serious DX reception. Um, so you either take out the other um, sideband by using a filter, as I mentioned before, or the phasing method. In this case, the incoming signal on 3.5 megahertz, um, it's phase shift, so we've got two signals 90 degrees apart. They go into twin mixers, mixed with the signal from the VFO, and we've got twin outputs. Um, again, they are shifted by 90 degrees because of what's coming through here. And with that, by phase shifting again, but this time at audio frequency, then you put the signals back together, but depending on how you reverse the connections between here and there, you can choose to either pick up the lower sideband or the upper sideband. So you've been able to null out the other, um, other sideband. Um, now the null in this sort of thing isn't quite as good as a good filter because we are using a very simple phase shift network. Um, the, um, um, but there's a, um, there's a great mobile app. How many of you have an Android mobile phone? Okay, um, less than half, but anyway, um, if, if you do, as soon as you get home, download an app called Frequency. Um, it's free, uh, Frequency. Anyway, it's, it's a free app, and what it is, it's an, an audio signal, um, an audio frequency spectrum analyzer. And you can download it as a free app for your Android phone. Now, once you have that, on your phone you'll have, a, um, you'll have kilohertz across the x-axis, um, I think it's 0 to 20 kilohertz, and then you'll have a scale in dB, um, you know, from 0 to minus 90 dB or whatever it is. Anyway, that is extremely useful um, when, you, when you're aligning these sorts of phasing things because you can, um, um, with this receiver, you can, uh, with your signal generator, you can uh, um, or even if you've got a crystal oscillator that you're aligning this thing with, um, you just set this to one side of your uh, um, signal, um, one side of your um, test signal, and then you you might have a you know it might be minus 20 dB, and then you set it to the other side, and it might be minus 40 or minus 50 dB, and and um, and you can either estimate the um, pitch of the sound by ear or you can just use a scale on the phone so you, you know you have a one kilohertz tone one side and then you go up through the null point through zero beat one kilohertz the other side and you look on the y-axis and see how much you're uh, you're rejecting um, and you'll notice that the rejection ratio of a simple phase shift network like this varies a lot depending on your um, frequency um, because your um, It'd be nice if you could get a 90 degree phase shift from 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz or even higher, but you can't. So the rejection does vary. So you might get 30 dB down on at one frequency and you might get only 20 dB down on the other. But still, even 20 dB down is 1% of 0 dB down. And if you're comparing it with a simple direct conversion receiver that doesn't offer any attenuation of the opposite sideband, then uh, and it's a, a fantastic improve. And with QRP on transmit, my experience is, you know, with, with one watt, um, your desired signals buried sufficiently in the noise that people will probably not hear your other sideband that's 20 or 30 dB down. Um, so that's basically the guts of this very simple phasing transceiver. Now, um, I got this, this original circuit I got off the uh, web um, published in a magazine by uh, SP5 AHT and uh, um, Polish guy and uh, and you and you, you cut and paste your Google your Polish and you put it into Google Translate and it actually translates it into English it does a pretty good job um, and, uh, and it works on Russian as well um, I'd found later on that I think he'd um, got his design there were earlier Russian designs as well with these very simple 
SSB phasing rigs. Um, the problem with SP5AHT's rig is that he used inductors in the audio section um, because the main thing that determines the selectivity of a, a phasing rig um, or audio bandwidth is um, some filtering in the audio. So you really do need some um, filtering. And uh, anyway, um, SP5AHT used these um, toroids that you round hundreds of turns of wire and you've got big, you know, lots of millihenries of inductance. And he had to do that because his audio was at a fairly high impedance. Um, and um, anyway, I found that if you got speaker transformers, 1K to 8 ohm, um, and if you did your audio filtering at 8 ohm, then you don't need very big inductors. Um, you can buy RF chokes from JCAR. Um, for a three kilohertz low pass filter at eight ohms, I think it's 6.8 microfarads and 470 microhenries or millihenries. Um, I think it's, think it's microhenries. Anyway, um, now JCAR, their RF chokes used to be like a dollar 75 each. Anyway, I've noticed that just in the last few weeks they've, they've um, cut the prices on some of the um, bits. So you, now you can get RF chokes for I think about 50 cents each. So um, that's some really useful values. I use them a lot for front end coils um, because you don't need to wind toys and things um, in receivers and, uh, and in this case as um, an audio filter. Um, and that's quite a, quite a good low pass filter. Um, I initially tried a, a 3K to 3K transformer on here and no audio filter, and that was fine um, for a receiver, but the selectivity was a bit broad. So, um, so in this particular design, um, I, um, I, I did put in a low pass filter with the back to back transformer. So we're going from 1K down to 8 ohms, doing the filtering back up to 1K, and up here, all we've got is an extra one audio amplifier for the, should be a speaker, and another audio amplifier for the microphone. So, if we actually complete the rest of the circuitry, we're actually taking some RF off here, we can do that through an extra coil if we want. We now have a complete transceiver. Um, on transmit, we'll just trace the signals through. The audio from the microphone is amplified. One transistor, one BC548 does that. Um, that goes into your 1K section of your audio transformer. It's filtered, so it cuts off the highs, so you've got clean audio. Um, the phase shift network here works in reverse on transmit. There's no extra connections or swapping things over. So the signal goes that way on transmit. And so we have two, the phase shifted audio signal here. It goes into our, our mixers, mixed with the VFO at 3.6 megahertz. Um, it's brought back together with the RF phase shift network up here, and then that's fed, there's a tuned circuit here, um, and then that's fed straight into your RF amplifier. There'll be a Pi network low pass filter here, and then into your antenna. So um, the phase shift, it's all done passively with resistors and capacitors. There are some performance limitations, but they're a pretty good trade off given that um, the simplicity that it offers. And on receive, it's completely opposite the signal, I've actually got an RF amplifier here, so it's one transistor um, into our phase shift network, our two product detectors mixed with the local oscillator, phase um, shift network brought back together, filtered and then amplified with the LM386. So if we go back to looking at where the parts are, we needed three transistors to boost the signal up to about one watt, we needed one transistor for the RF amplifier, BC548, we need eight plus another um, for the for the buffer here to uh, to provide a bit of isolation. So this can be an LM three eighty six. So we are up to we should be up to about seven transistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so that is an SSB transceiver for. 80 meters um, with a single signal receiver. So that shows how simple SSB can be. Um, it's uh, not completely finished, but it is operational. It has had contacts to VK7, um, so I'll, uh, I'll pass that around. Um, now there is a demonstration on my 
YouTube channel of an earlier version covering just the receiver. Um, the um, transmitter part, it's pretty much similar to, there, there is a link to that, to the um, SP5 AHT article which has his transceiver. His is similar, I think he uses discrete transistors or something um, in the audio amplifier stage. Um, but it's a similar sort of concept, um, so you can look up the circuit there. Um, and um, hopefully in Spratt and sure, you know, make a, you know, have a bit more of an article about the um, um, whole, tran whole transceiver. But um, I, I just found it um, first phasing project, starting off with the receiver and then, um, which is a thing. Um, I just found it was exceptionally ingenious as to how it reused all its stages, didn't require much fancy switching, um, yet it was a full SSB transceiver. There was, however, one problem, um, and that caused me to put this aside for a couple of months um, until I worked out what it was. And that was the, um, the signal sounded fine on a local receiver, but um, the power meter stubbornly stayed at its full lot, even when you weren't talking. And on an SSB rig, that's not to do that. Um, anyway, I brought it around, and the problem was basically RF feedback, because you have the transmit receive relay up here, it was getting through from the output of the um, final amplifier. The, there was obviously a small amount of capacitance in the transmit receive relay. It was obviously getting through all this circuitry again. And anyway, I, I put in a, a separate relay, um, so two relay contacts, uh, separate relays mounted in different parts of the box, which you'll see inside. And, and that improved isolation and that fixed the problem. But uh, that confounded me for a a couple of months, um, and then I went on to other projects during that time. Um, so, uh, yeah, any, any questions on phasing SSB? Maybe I've gone too fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are you using for the balance modulator? Balance modulator, uh, as simple as you can get, one in, nine, one in four, one, four, eight diodes. And, uh, it's um, pretty much all of this is off. I'd say you could, I think all the parts um, I think come from JCAR except for the ceramic resonator who um, VK5 EME sells in Adelaide. I think um, so, um, Rockby I think sell them. So um, you can actually build complete SSB transceiver projects with parts that you can commonly buy, um, contrary to popular belief and. And I think this type of design proves how it can be done. How stable is it? Um, it's pretty good. Um, it does use a, um, a ceramic resonator. If I had a free running VFO, then it should probably have a separate box and better voltage regulation. But it's, um, um, no, it's, it's, it's stable enough. Um, and another, I haven't built a version for 40 metres, but um, um, you can buy ceramic resonators for 7.2 megahertz, and the general idea should work on 40 as well. Um, a, be a bonus is the current consumption on receive would be, I haven't measured it, it would be extremely low. So for portable type operating with small batteries, um, something like this might draw a tenth or less the power of an FT817. Yeah. David, you mentioned frequency. If anyone wants to see it operating, yeah. I've got it here. Well, um, did you already have it or just downloaded it? Oh, just, just downloaded yeah. it off the... Yeah, it's one of the things about it. If, if you're travelling in a, a train or a car or whatever, have, um, not, don't do this while you're driving, but have a look at, you know, or even if you're near electric motors, have a look at the sort of waveforms and signals and things, little things, noises that you don't notice, you see come up on the display and it's quite fascinating. It's quite accurate too. Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, so um, you know, phasing rigs were at one time considered hard to align, but now it's, you know, things are much easier. Oh man! Here we go. Oh, cool. Okay. Any more questions so, for Peter? Uh, so that's it. Okay. Thank you. And we've got. Handouts of the magnetic loop, the 80 centimetre one that uh, that uh, there's. Uh, I've, you know.
Not one for everyone, but one for most if, if, you, if you want one. Make sure Carl gets one. Okay. <laughs> yes, Carl. <laughs> Well, they come in three meals. That's just right for nice. Generally, it's because the because for the receiving type of things, the size doesn't matter so much. Like a ninety centimeter. Another problem.